Briggs and Ricky Sullivan out of Schuylerville. And there's Darrell Wilson, 16-0, two draws, 11 knockouts. And, of course, the most important one, the one over Darrell Wilson. We're going to go up to our ring announcer now, J.J. Wright, with the introductions. All right. All right, ladies and gentlemen, good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Roxy in historic Boston, Massachusetts. I'm J.J. Wright, and welcome aboard as Cedric Kushner Sports Network presents the Corona Extra Heavyweight Explosions. Now, tonight's bouts are being telecast worldwide tonight on the TVKO, which is America's pay-for-view network. So are you ready for some excitement and some action tonight, ladies and gentlemen? All right. Let's get right to it. Let's meet our players in our first bout tonight. This is a 10-rounder between the heavyweights of this heavyweight explosion. So let's go right over to the blue corner. Rank number 12 in the IBF with an incredible win, 16 wins, including 11 knockouts, weighing in at 228 pounds. From Danville, Virginia, give it up for Darrell Wilson. In the red corner, with six incredible wins, including four KOs at 212 pounds from Skyliverville, New York, give it up for Rick Roundhouse Sullivan. So, gentlemen, if you're ready, it is showtime. Let's do it. tonight, Mike Ryan. And we're underway. Scheduled for 10. John, what do we expect from Wilson early in the fight? Slow start? Fast start? He looked fast, obviously, against Shannon Briggs. Well, of course, we saw Shannon Briggs swarm him, as he does every other fighter. And Wilson managed to escape that first round and came back and basically knocked the fight right out of Shannon Briggs by the second round and stopped it. In this kind of a fight, I think you're going to see Wilson taking his time a little bit. Wilson has scored knockouts. They've all come up to three rounds. He's got 11 knockouts in 16 wins. All of them coming in three rounds or less. By the same token, with a brawler like Rick Sullivan, you don't want to give him a lot of time in there in the ring because if he does something fluky and you get cut, that's not going to be good news for him. There's a slip there by Wilson. Sometimes you have a little bit of 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 a little bit a bad beard or a no beard. He's been stopped six times. Wilson, the heavy hitter, want to take him out. It would not look good on Wilson's record at this point. Okay. I have Ricky Sullivan at home just this way. Darrell Wilson, solid black. Darrell Wilson, he didn't even get involved in a serious way in the amateurs until 1992. So Darrell Wilson is still learning the nuances of the professional game. Well, he turned pro at 27. He's 30 years of age right now. Very late. Learned the boxing. We've got about a minute to go now. Round number one, Ricky Sullivan. There's a couple of roundhouse punches. And that's what Ricky's uh, known for doing on the circuit. He's not your basic sharpshooter in this. Last fight, as we mentioned, was June 9th. Eight round, losing a decision with Millie Feliz up at Fernwood Resort in Pennsylvania. Of course, Wilson has not fought since the knockout victory over Shannon Briggs. And you ask a question, Wilson came in 13 pounds heavy last night, and he did against Briggs. We 228 pounds today. Well, certainly he's not figuring Rick Sullivan will be much in front of him and probably cannot train as hard. That's a typical thing that a fighter can fall into a trap. Okay, hey! Darren hey. Wilson is not a good guy. He really is. Rick Sullivan. See, he's 
south of the border, Tijuana style. Catching up on the tail of the tape tonight, you see Darrell Wilson with a one inch height advantage. Ricky Sullivan, and a correction on the weights, it's Ricky Sullivan at 228, Wilson at 218. Okay, that puts things into perspective. Slight reach advantage for Darrell Wilson. And we have a correction coming on the ages as well. We have Darrell Wilson is 30 years of age. He is 30 years. Oh, and a big right hand lands right. Ricky Sullivan looks down at us, says, nah, that didn't hurt me, but John, we know better. That's the first sign when a fighter shakes it off, you know he got stung. And that's just what Ricky Sullivan did. And now you really see Darrell Wilson turning it, and they heat up here in the second round. And this is turning into a war. There's a lot of hope, there's a lot of illegal stuff going on right now. And right now, referee Ryan has to come take the floor of his Certainly the heavier hitter of the two. Again, 11 knockouts in his 16 wins. They've all come in three rounds away. Ricky Sullivan, four KOs in his six wins. He's also been stopped six times. I don't know if I have my for this This we go. It's Ricky Sullivan. He's in the blue shorts with the white stripe. Darrell Wilson with a solid strike. Sullivan can be very durable when he wants to. He's definitely a survivor. And clearly sees how Oh, 
Round number three, we're scheduled for 10. Darrell Wilson in the black shorts, Ricky Sullivan, he's in the blue with the white stripe, no knockdowns thus far in the fight. And already, I gotta tell you though, you know, if you put things in perspective, Ricky Sullivan's doing better than Shannon Briggs. Not, not a lot better. <laughs> Darrell Wilson's really gained that jab coming here in the third round, Arnie. He's gained Wilson, uh, excuse me, Sullivan, totally defensive and defensive. Know, Sullivan's not going to jab, at least throw a lead right hand. He is a sitting duck for those jabs and right hands from Wilson. Nice right hand lead there from Wilson. Interesting statistic though, Wilson has never stopped anybody past round number three. Goes past round number three, the fight goes the distance. Interesting distance fight too as cruiserweight Terry McGroom went the full 10 rounds to get a draw against Darrell Wilson. That's the same Terry McGroom that put a 10 round draw with Anthony Hembrick recently in Detroit. It's conditioning on Ricky's part, too. Actually, that first left hand was more of a slap, but then he hit him with a sharp right hand right on the point of the chin. Certainly got Darrell Wilson's attention, and we're only halfway gone here in round number three. That's what I like to see. Set up that right hand with a jab. Unfortunately, he didn't find the target. He's a little more tentative now about rushing in. Sullivan caught him coming in that time. This is essentially target practice for Darrell Wilson right here. I mean, Ricky Sullivan has a big bullseye paint on that forehead. Yeah, I'd like to see Wilson learn to hook off that jab too, Arnie. That's something a young fighter, in his case he's 30, but in terms of experience he's young, needs to learn to do. He's had only 18 pro fights again, came into this fight 16-0, two draws, 11 KOs. You have to only wonder what would have happened, John, if he hadn't turned pro when he was 27 years of age. Very light amateur career. Wanted to be a pro football player, Darrell Wilson. Went to George Washington High School in Danville, Virginia. He played high school school football with uh, Farrell Edmonds, okay. the NFL, and Hilton Moore, and that was with Detroit Lions, of course. And we're going to end around the three. We're scheduled for 10. Here, they have a no facial hair rule in Massachusetts. 
juices, and you remember it the way in Dow Wilson had a beer and they made him shake it. He was not a happy camp. No, he wasn't. It was a nice beer. Just glad they didn't turn to me and say announcers uh, aren't allowed to wear beards either. Oh, there was a and Wilson game. got caught again. Well, Daryl's getting a little bit sloppy here because it's that kind of a fight. We've had heads buddy, we've had low blows.
really hard. And he's only got 18 pro fights. So I don't think he's a contender. And often enough, I think we're just playing the waiting game a little bit. We're waiting to see the Gallagher from the British that gets into society. We're waiting to see what happens with the British in his capacity. It was just a group of bad men. Target practice. He loves to throw that right after the left. As you also mentioned, though, doesn't seem to have mastered the hook off the jab yet. And as we were saying in this corner, they're telling him go to the body. It's a learning process, and he's got a ways to go. Coming up, the IBF Intercontinental Heavyweight Championship between Obed Sullivan and James Gaines. But right now. Got Ricky Sullivan getting into the desperate hours, but he's here around the It's a place where a lot of people didn't think he'd be against Darren Wilson. That Sullivan is in the blue with the white stripe. Ricky Sullivan is, excuse me, Darren Wilson in the solid black. Ricky Sullivan in the blue with the white stripe. Unofficially, I've got it as a shutout for Darren Wilson. John, you've got it five. Virtually a shutout. Zero, one even. But Ricky Sullivan has landed a few blows. Not that they hurt Wilson as much as you have to wonder why he's getting hit by them. Coming to you from the Roxy in Boston, Massachusetts. Which with the uh, balconies here remind you a little bit of the Blue Horizon in Philadelphia. Has a, definitely a Blue Horizon vibe. Russell Peltz, one of the promoters of the Blue Horizon, in attendance today because he's the promoter of Darrell Wilson. There's been a few fights that have broken out the Roxy here already the last year. Peter McNeely was involved in a fracas in the nightclub. in his career, never 10 rounds. Darrell Wilson's been 10 rounds twice, one of them a, a draw, as we mentioned earlier, against Terry McGrew, who's basically a cruiserweight. And James Stanton in a 10 round win, that was back in December of 95. Has never knocked anybody out past three rounds. So statistics at the moment are in Ricky Sullivan's favor. Wilson's also gotta be careful. After he jabs, he drops his left hand low. With an experienced fighter, he's going to get countered with a right hand one day, and he's going to pay for it. Evidently, he feels against Sullivan, he can get away with that attack. Ricky Sullivan's had only four knockouts in his six wins. Hasn't stopped anybody since June of 94. Stopped Vinny Dell. Wilson, Ricky 
be on the point situation here as we come to the end. Round number six. Yes, 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 yes. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, Week for 10 days to low blow. But Darrell Wilson, we're coming to you, as we mentioned earlier, the Roxy in Boston, Massachusetts. Yeah, this is where they filmed the movie, Celtic Pride. Scenes from that movie. Really? As long as it lasted, about a week in the theater. Major bomb. Straight to video. We take a look, there's the balcony. And this is also where... Uh, it's a landmark building, isn't it? I believe this is a historic the building, landmark. Yeah, but the Roxy's only been here nine years. Good fight crowd here tonight on hand for heavyweight explosion. Looking forward, of course, to the Obed Sullivan James Gaines title fight coming up. Good tail end of Ricky Sullivan's corner there as we begin round number seven and they said don't say nothing John what are they referring to Arnie I don't have the foggiest so maybe they're afraid if he opens his mouth he's going to stuff another jack down it Sullivan now hot dogging waving to the crowd But you gotta wonder, a guy who stopped Shannon Briggs fairly quickly, struggling against a club fighter here tonight, Rick Sullivan. I mean, mentally it's tough to get up for a fight like this. He told me last night that he trained for this fight like he was gonna be fighting Mike Tyson. It didn't make any difference to him. He was gonna be ready. With all due respect to Darrell Wilson, he would have been in a lot of trouble with Tyson then tonight. As we mentioned earlier, I had said Ricky Sullivan, okay. Very good under 500 fighter came in with a 6 and 11 record, only four knockouts. And I also said, if I'm a manager, and I'm coming up a big win like Shannon Briggs, I'm going to let my fighter out of the house. Look for the bigger payday and put him in against something and maybe work a lot in the gym. Because, well, like we said before, they wanted David Tua. Personally, I feel Tua is going to be a lot for Darrell Wilson to handle. I don't think Darrell Wilson has a sting on his punch to keep Tua off. Well, if the Johnny if, if Ruiz fight, fight is, any, is any measuring stick of that, you know, Tua looked fantastic taking Johnny Ruiz out in one round. Darrell Wilson looking a little tired now, and as you pointed out, he drops that left after the jab. Ricky Sullivan trying his own jab now to counter. Oh, Rick doesn't jab more often. I mean, it's such a fundamental to the sport of boxing. Without a jab, you're nothing as a fighter. Although Mike Tyson is doing pretty well without a jab, although in his prime as he was coming up the first time, Tyson had a very underrated jab. So under a minute to go in round number seven. This is scheduled for 10. Now, one of the other things with Ricky Sullivan, as we mentioned, he's never been past eight. He may just be preserving himself, doesn't want to throw too many punches. Darrell Wilson, on the other hand, I don't have an excuse for, for why he's slowing down here in round number seven. Okay. 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 Okay.
concentrate on that. I'm not doing no one or three people. I gotta fight for 16 and all. Round number eight, and you heard what both quarters had to say here. John, it was interesting. One corner's telling Darrell Wilson, this guy's nothing, you gotta get on him, don't worry about getting caught, which makes you think that maybe some of Sullivan's punches did catch him when Wilson was napping. Ricky Sullivan's saying he's number 12, he's not so great. You might not have a bad point. And you heard Elijah White, Wilson's trainer, pumping him up in the corner sensing that his fighter was feeling fatigue and perhaps even psychologically telling himself I'm running out of gas and slowing down in the fight. They want Sullivan out of there. They, they would love to stop him inside of 10 rounds. This is not going to look good for their fighter. Well, we're even at a point right now where Darrell Wilson's stock is dropping by Ricky Sullivan even being here in round number eight. As we pointed out earlier, Wilson has never stopped anybody past the third round. He's gone the 10 round distance twice, the eight round distance three times. Ricky Sullivan's never been 10. If he gets past this round, he's in uncharted waters. Well, Wilson needs to develop more of an arsenal, Arnie. He's really got the jab going for him. And Rick Sullivan just kissed Darrell Wilson, and Wilson laughed it off. That was a nice gesture of sportsmanship after all the, the foul play we've had. But really, Wilson needs to develop other punches, and that's why he's a limited fighter at this point. Wilson's also on glory right now. He's keeping both arms very low. And Ricky Sullivan, don't let that kiss fool you. That kiss was away. He's trying to suck his way through the next three rounds and soften up Darrell Wilson. He wants to be standing here at the end of 10. He came in here to go the distance. He doesn't have any delusions about being heavyweight champion coming in with a 6-11 and 11 record. Darrell Wilson does after having beaten Shannon Briggs and being ranked number 12 in the world. After Wilson fires one of those jabs, I'd love to see him throw the right hand right down the pipe. He's not really doing that. Just whacking Sullivan up, but he's not taking advantage of the opportunities. And I got to tell you, John, at this point, I'd like to see him even double on the jab. He seems... Throws one jab at a time. Nothing left on his one. Busy at all. Taking some shots here from Ricky Sullivan. The only problem is at this point, Sullivan, who needs to knock out to win this fight unofficially, doesn't have the punching power to do any damage this late in the fight with Wilson's arms hanging to the sides. Not only that, I really question what kind of punching power Darrell Wilson has in this is the heavyweight division. Let's make no mistake about it. He might be able to get away with it against the Ricky Sullivan, but how is he going to do against the division's top fighter? Ricky Sullivan looked down at us again, shook his head as if he said, what's the big deal? Good stiff jab, Sullivan. Take a look here at the crowd at the Roxy on Heavyweight Explosion. Coming up, of course, we got Obed Sullivan and James Gaines for the IBF Intercontinental Heavyweight Championship. And John, with through eight, how have you got it? I mean, it's a virtual shutout for Daryl Wilson at this point. I mean, you might score one of those rounds even, or maybe give one to Sullivan. Based on Wilson not doing it, I'm going to the round. The Roma, I think it's a clear bet to see. your time here. It's your time, Kent. Put your combinations together, like you do in the gym. Beep, beep, beep. Like a tomorrow or somebody. You know, build or people. Bang, bang, bang. Put them together. Put yourself together and put your head in there. He can't hurt you. Put your chin down and bang that body like you really want. I'm not going to show me. I got him. You got him. I 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 got him. Round number nine, and we're in a place where Ricky Sullivan's never been before. He's been eight twice in his career. Actually, three times in his career, all in losing efforts. First time he's been in round one, he's been to play ten twice.
Well, they may be going out buying furniture after this fight, but right now, Ricky Sullivan is doing what he wanted to do when he came into this fight, and that's simply a la Rocky one. He wants to go to distance tonight with Darrell Wilson. Good uppercut by Wilson, Arnie, then a right hand. That's the second uppercut he's thrown in the fight, and he's landed well with both of them, but he seems apprehensive about using it. And Sullivan talking to him on the inside when the two fighters neared each other. As if to say, you ain't got nothing, man. We're in round number nine. There's been no knockdowns thus far in the fight. That's Darrell Wilson. He's in the black shorts. Ricky Sullivan, he's in the blue and white. Wilson came into the fight undefeated. 16-0, two draws, 11 knockouts. Sullivan, a 6-11 fighter, four knockouts. And, of course, Wilson, the prohibitive favorite here, coming off the big knockout win over Shannon Briggs. Everybody expected a quick blowout of Ricky Sullivan, and we're here in the ninth round, halfway gone in round number nine. And Ricky Sullivan is still standing, and he's been standing the entire fight. I guess the matchmakers do something, huh? Well, again, Sullivan showed a lot of durability in his last two fights, both losing efforts, but going the eight-round distance both times. A lot of swelling and puffiness, and now some blood trickling down from Sullivan's nose. Oh, there he is, battling back, still trying. Crude as it may be to some fight fans. Left hand by Wilson trying to follow up. Here's a situation where he should be able possibly to finish the job. But you see Sullivan just trying to hold on and survive this round and get into the tent. Good body work and then it's leading with Darrell Wilson all throughout the fight. Go to the body and that's where, that's where Sullivan is most susceptible. I think the fight would have been over if he had listened to his corner. In fact, if he has enough steam left, I think he could end it right here, but he's letting Sullivan off the hook. And we've got less than 20 seconds to go in round number nine, and you know Ricky Sullivan, the man on a mission. His mission is to go to distance. Wilson's mission to stop Ricky Sullivan. His stock goes down tremendously if Ricky Sullivan goes to distance with him. He needs to throw an uppercut. Wilson does. Again, working the body finally. Really took a lot out of Ricky Sullivan with those body shots. Sullivan just wants to survive one more round to go the full 10. He's in an area he's never been before. He's never been okay, in the eight rounds. I know one round to go. Keep that top off and just count on my throat. Hold it, hold it. on that or maybe we'll no comment on that. I'll let you handle it on it. Well, tenth and final round. Ricky Sullivan, we mentioned earlier, in uncharted waters has never been past eight. Darrell Wilson's been the full ten twice in his career. Only one of them in a winning effort, the other one a ten round draw against Terry McGrew. Wilson wants to stop at your dismount and he's gonna go for it. I think he's gonna let it hang out when he has left. Let's see if Sullivan can weather the storm. And that's Shannon, Shannon Briggs. Could. And that's Sullivan, he's in the blue shorts with the white stripe. Darrell Wilson in the solid black. There's been no knockdowns thus far in the fight. Boy, you gotta wonder what's going through Shannon Briggs' mind if he's at home watching this fight. What do you think, Shannon? And all the shareholders that invested in Mark Roberts' is, uh, stock. So a lot of investors in Shannon Briggs have to be wondering here. What was wrong that night? Might not just be that night, that's the problem. Of course, Kenny Atlas no longer training Shannon Briggs. Ricky Sullivan holding on, he got a minute going by here in round number 10. He wants to go to distance. Darrell Wilson desperately wanted to stop him in the tickets to body shots, but it might be five rounds too late. He could have done this exact same body work, John, in my opinion, earlier in the fight. It's exactly the same results. And he would have had Ricky Sullivan after. Sullivan has a very good chin, not good at taking body attacks. Well, there are some ugly red welts along Sullivan's left ribcage area. So Wilson has picked up 
in that department as the rounds have gone on, but probably didn't do enough. Well, we take a look at the minute gone, uh, minute to go here, a little more than a minute to go in round number 10. Some of the people that knock with Sullivan out, we can make a comparison. Joel Scott, Johnny Ruiz stopped him in two. Peter Smith, who just recently got knocked out, knocked it out before. Michael Grant, who came to the heavyweight, stopped him in one. And a guy that I never heard of named Clifton Mitchell. All those guys are in a much bigger physically than is Darrell Wilson. Darrell Wilson is a small heavyweight. Should he be fighting at perhaps three yeah. like this and getting down to 190 or that new super cruiserweight division at 280? The question in boxing, why you see so many guys who are worried about fighting in a heavyweight division is strictly about economics. They can make a big killing in the heavyweight division if they can get ranked and get that one Tyson fight with a Mike Tyson. Or okay, okay. Fight with more or with a power or an exclusive. And he did that one thing that he needed to do. I'll tell you this, he may not have trouble with though getting that big test fight and that big payday as it looks like Ricky Sullivan is going to go the distance here with Darren Wilson, a big surprise. And again, we got a Florida matchmaker. <laughs> Bill Best puts this guy in here and Ricky Sullivan more than went rounds. He went the distance for the first time in his career. Both fighters hugging each other. Uh, major, I don't want to call it upset because Darrell Wilson, in our opinion anyway, unofficially didn't win the fight, probably won all 10 rounds on the judges' scorecards. But by not stopping Ricky Sullivan, a fighter that's been stopped six times in his career, came into the fight with a 6-11 and 11 record, only four knockouts, not much of a punching threat. You've got to wonder where Darrell Wilson's going from here. Where was Shannon that night Wilson Didn't turn pro until he was 27 years of age. This was only his 19th pro fight. If you put that into perspective, you have your good nights, you have your bad nights, not a bad performance, a lot of things to work on. But after the big KO of Shannon Briggs, he was supposed to be the second coming. Didn't turn out that way. His promoter made a Russell Pelt in the audience tonight. Has to be wondering what the next move is with Darrell Wilson. Does he need more tune-ups? Or does he just go in and take the big fight and hope that maybe he gets up for a big fight as he did with Shannon Briggs and maybe he just couldn't get started. Up to JJ right now though, with our official decision. And ladies and gentlemen, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. JJ having a technical problem here, getting check, the mic check. to work. Check, check. Ricky Sullivan, we see him there, very happy having gone the 10 round distance the first time in his career. In 10 rounds with a man who stopped Shannon Briggs in three. Check. And up to JJ. All right, ladies and gentlemen, it is official. Our first bout of the evening, the winner by unanimous decision, Darren Wilson in the blue corner. There you have it. No surprise, Darren Wilson, winner by unanimous decision. A big round of applause decision. for Rick Sullivan. So we're going to get an opportunity to talk with him and see exactly what he thinks might have gone wrong tonight. And again, not to take anything away from a victory, but certainly what went wrong relative to the fact that he was expected to knock out Ricky Sullivan. We're going to go up to our John Saracino in the ring with Darrell Wilson. Okay, John. All right, Darrell, you had a huge win against Shannon Briggs. Tonight, in with a less skilled fighter. Are you disappointed that he went the full 10 rounds against you? No, I feel good because I ain't had no good buckling in a while like that. So... I'm ready to go to 10 rounds, that happened to knock out. What was happening with all those low blows there? Very early, it got very dirty. To me, I don't think it was low. He was just, I think he was just faking, doing a Riddick Bowe. Uh, doing his uh, plans or something, making a play. And, and then, let, so, and let, a couple of times like that too, so, hey, I told you. It, it, hit me down, I'm hit him back. Later on, he made up by it by kissing you, didn't he? Uh, <laughs> yeah, kissed me twice, right? Tried to make me mad, but I still kept my opposing. You know, some people in the in the boxing have questioned your punching power, and tonight you were really unable to get him out of there. What do you think of your ability to punch? Oh, like I said, 
depends on what kind of fight. I, like I said, it depends on what kind of fight I fight. I got a good fighter, I bring the best out of me. But I can't look at it like that. I got a, even a bad fighter, I, I got to work harder. You know what I'm saying? Well, in the rounds, I turned it up. In the later rounds, I would turn it up. But he was getting tired. He was grabbing me a lot. What's the toughest thing about fighting a brawling club fighter like Rick Sullivan? Well, they're the type that they will survive. They're going to survive, do what they can do, do anything. Trying to throw a, catch a haymaker punch, catch you anything. So you got to look off all that. So you can't uh, doubt nobody, like I told you. Then the fighter, then the fighter would regulate again, give you a hard fight, what I tell you. <laughs> Did you want to take, it looked like really the corner was on you at the end of the fight between rounds to get him out of there. Well, they told me to go to the body. So he said he had a hard heel. He got a hard heel. And then as the round went on, I started working his body. So I think if I would have did it earlier when they told me, I think he'd have been gone earlier. But I just got in the head hunting position. So he gave me the head, I just took it instead of going to his body. So just moving the head a lot. Just kind of like you say you can't move the body. What about doubling up on your jab? We know you throw a lot of single jabs, but you weren't doubling up. And even and as a young fighter, you're trying to learn to hook off the jab. Oh, yeah. You still have a ways to go. They got a ways. I'm still learning. I'm still a little puppy. I ain't, I ain't got anything right like I wanted yet. But it's coming along. So I, 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 I thank the Lord for that. So get back in the gym and get more butter boxing. Now, Daryl, there's been talk that you might fight David Tua next. Is that a fight you would welcome? Is that a fight you want made soon? Oh, I take it. Make a difference. Okay, like uh, like Shannon, he ain't fought nobody. So, do with him, building him up slowly. He's doing the right thing. So, when that fight come on, it'll be a great fight. It's gonna be like a Tyson fight, like Tyson and Holyfield. You think you can really hang in there with the big punchers in the heavyweight division? You're a small heavyweight. You're not the biggest guy in the world. Oh, hey, look at Holyfield. He wasn't a big guy, but he was fighting. So that, that's, that's what we're working on. Him. Our speed and stuff, man. It's coming along. It'll take time, but it's coming. So, that's all we gotta do: get back in the gym. Good more work. That's it. All right, Daryl. Thank you very much. Okay. Arnie, back to you. All right. Thank you, John. And again, Daryl Wilson improves to 17 and 0. Two draws, 11 knockouts. Stays at 11 KOs. The knockout eluded him here. Ricky Sullivan drops down to 6 and 12, but has a moral victory in terms of going the full 10 rounds. And heavyweight explosion brought to you tonight by. Foxwood Resort and Casino in the heart of the Connecticut woods. And by Corona Extra La Cerveza Maspita. And the Logan Airport Ramada. When in Boston, try the Ramada. And we're back here at the Roxy.